On today's show, we have a mashup involving a 99 classic and a school spirit with the release of 99's Dixon and Bias era Maryland Terrapins apparel. Join us as we look back at a legendary game involving Dixon and the Terps and talk about some of the history, present, and future of Maryland basketball. Now, on to the show. Welcome to the 19.9 podcast, maybe the only retro college basketball podcast. I am Aaron Meyer. My co-host is Josh Barnett, and I'm going to kick it to him to talk a little bit about the gear drop that happened today on 19.9's website and just kind of set the scene for the game we're going to talk about and uh, the Maryland, Maryland Terrapins college vault team here. Kind of exciting to say. It feels good to say It that. was a very exciting 35 minutes down here. <laughs> oh, very- yeah, I bet. <laughs> you guys put, putting stickers on each other? Vault, college vault. No, it was wild, man. It was uh, it was fast and furious, and it's gone. You pick some, you pick some good uh, years for. I mean, Maryland. As uh, I'm gonna do the what you need to know, and just kind of go through the Maryland history uh, for another bonus episode. But just digging into that, man, Maryland is one of those schools where you're like, okay, this. I mean, every school has its guys and its teams, but sometimes you have whole eras. And yeah, they, they have just like the Lefty era, the Gary Williams era, and you know that that's just a different different level of team then the um the college vault the stuff that we have coming this february Mm. like all of these schools were near the top of my list when we started 99 or i guess when we got the shorts like when the shorts became the big piece of it um i i really needed these maryland o2 shorts (laughs) like i really really needed them (laughs) and then i forgot to pull a pair for myself and they're all gone Uh, which is cool that's fine i'd rather somebody else have them but uh and then the Lynn Bias era uh, yellow shorts came in, and I'm like, I like these more than the O2s. Like this, there's something about that yellow yeah. with that. I was um, trying to think of a like a uh, way to describe the color. It's almost like a molten because it's yellow. I'm a little back and forth on, but it's almost like a molten. Yellow, I agree. Like, a, like the sun. I agree. Got a cool yeah. quality to it that it just like really, I'm, really pops. I'm super pumped for everybody to get them in hand that ordered them because yeah. they look better in hand. Even they look even better in hand than they do. Uh, through our imagery and stuff. So the O2s was easy. Um, you know, that was a, that was a, a no brainer. Uh, we got lucky enough that, uh, Maryland's LD who was great to us, allowed us to, to use the, um, the logo. Cause that M with the flag above it is retired for right now. Really? Okay. So there was a, a little bit of work through and she pushed that through for us. And we, uh, we appreciate that. That's so cool. I yeah, want more dope. people to talk about that lefty, the lefty Drizel and just to talk about bias too, because oh, what an incredible player. I I think I was trying to find an audio clip and just saw this like sweet jump shot he hits and then he steals the ball to North Carolina and does this like reverse jam with a bunch of thought it was, When we were doing research, we rewatched the 30 for 30 without bias. Oh yeah. Uh, and which I mean, takes on a depressing tone, yeah. you know, um, obviously with the story. Uh, but they, in some of the research, it was either through without bias or it was through a couple of the articles I was reading. They said that the thing that separated Jordan or separated bias from Jordan as a collegiate player was, was bias was such a better jump shooter. Mm. Um, I mean, his jump shot is nice. Pretty perfect. <laughs> it's, nice. it's pretty perfect. And yeah. he rises so high and he was yeah. just, you know, huge and strong. And then uh, Maryland O2 obviously beat our Hoosiers and, and, uh, and you were there, um, oh, but man. they beat us. Uh, but it never took away my love for Maryland, those uniforms and that team. Like I was really fascinated with that team. And in some of my favorite games in that two to three year stretch with Juan Dixon and Lonnie Baxter and those guys and Wilcox, he was just a freshman that year. But those battles that they had with Duke were like must-see TV. Mm. And then you were always excited that they could pair up again in the ACC tournament. And then the year before, they even paired back up with final, Duke in the yeah, Final, final Four. four. Um, so those were just legendary battles. Um, and it was cool. And I was always a big Gary Williams fan. Yeah, I, I love so Gary Williams. Cool. Well, you know, guy went to Maryland 
Plays at Maryland. Sweats a lot. Sweats, <laughs> sweats a lot. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. Yeah. I, sweat, sweat I mean, he, you, you, there's some sweat coaches that play suit. it cool, and then there's Gary Williams. He's just sweat where you're just, Yeah, you just look at him after the game, and you're like, that guy gave it everything he's he had. He's not taking off his jacket like, either. He's yeah. just got to keep the jacket oh, he, on and sweat he, through and it. You're like, that, that's, wow. That, but that would be cool as a player, though. Like, yeah. I mean, this dude comes in as sweaty as you are after the game, and he yeah, was just, right. you know, he was refined to like a five by five box on the sideline. Not worried about the champagne. Right, right. I'm reading uh, John Thompson's book, so we got we got to try and find this. But I didn't even know this, but he did a radio show for years afterwards in D.C. after he retired from okay. Georgetown, and he brought Lefty onto this radio show, and he was like, in, you know, he's talking about it in his book, so it must have been pretty memorable. Yeah. If you're going to include Character. talking about a radio yeah. show in yeah. in your book, but he said it was an amazing conversation. I'm like, I got to find the audio. For yeah, that. for sure. So if I the, can, the we'll other like pe- the other piece of Maryland is Cole Fieldhouse to me and I know that they turned it into the football facility mm-hmm. um, but I always wanted to go and watch a game there it's a huge regret that I didn't make it when I was you know like 15 and had no money to get, <laughs> go there but uh if, if, it, if it was open now we would get to a game whenever this COVID stuff passes but yeah. um Coalfield House very historic right you had Texas Western um beating UK oh, wow. yeah uh at Coalfield House ton of other games too ton of NCAA games and then just the tradition of Maryland and the way that they closed out Coalfield House where they had all the Maryland greats start on one side and go all the way through and they just pass the ball all the way down for the last bucket to be made cool. like still gives me chills even thinking about it and i have no affiliation to Good maryland to basketball this is the best way i've ever seen yeah. one closed down before yeah. respect for an old gym exactly Indiana, and, and at least they didn't Indiana. tear it down either yeah, i know at least they didn't tear That's it down brutal when you hear about these old those old gyms because the, the ghosts just you, you, you miss them exactly sure. so yeah we were we were i was super excited we were all super excited for maryland but maryland was like my white whale, one of my Moby Dicks of of ninety nine for sure yeah. to get. Well, I can see why too. These shorts, I wanted to. Br- I brought them in. I know people can't see them, but you can still see them. On that the, pair's on already the site. sold. Don't touch that. I know, but <laughs> <laughs> keep your hands off that. I, I have my greasy little fingers <laughs> out there. But the the way that that incorporates the flag to uh, the state flag, just I mean, colors, it, it's a cool. Yeah, you know, the, the red colors, the contrast again, the yellow in there where it's not uh, not unexpected makes it pop. Just and so. I know, I know a lot of you missed out, and and we apologize for that. You'll that's, probably that's, do it. That's part of it, but yeah, we part do. Of it. That's part of the fun. The biases will come back for sure. Yeah. Um. It'll be a little longer, and then there'll be a held back select pairs of the O2 because we have something special coming in March with those. So ah, nice. you'll have a chance to get yes. them again. Okay. Uh, here in three weeks okay. three four weeks so not a ton not a ton left yeah. we sold most of what we had but yeah. there, there's a few pairs so there's some hope that's still. the fun that's the funnest stuff though i mean if you're gonna go for go for things that's that decides who the real fans are like are you willing are you willing to put a little bit of sweat equity like gary williams into I'm, it I felt I felt bad for some people that overslept. You know, <laughs> there was a guy that got on a conference call, oh, missed no, out. Like you know, and he said he had him in his cart and he forgot to click like the finalized oh, checkout and no. then hopped on a Zoom call and then got back <laughs> and, it, it, and it and they were gone. But uh, we'll get him taken care of, man. Well, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get him. Let's get into this game a little bit. I'm gonna let uh, Billy Packer here set set things up. This is pretty. This is, uh, pretty this is O2. This is O2 Kansas from, Maryland from Final the Four. Game, yep. With Billy Packer. This is so even, Billy. Everybody's been talking about this game all week. It's so even, it even gets down to the coaches. They have the same name. We got the Williams. And when you're on the road to the Final Four, coming off of Interstate 85, you take the Georgia Dome exit. Yes, you even take Williams Street. However, Maryland, out of College Park, Maryland, when they take their exit here in the Atlanta area for their hotel, how about this as an omen? They take the College Park exit. <laughs> James, we are broadcasting. We're not reading tea leaves. you got to get back to the game here. Oh, well, look how even it is, though, Billy. Look at these tournament stats and the tail of the tape between these two. It really is amazing, but both of these clubs have had great years. Maryland 15-1 and one in the ACC, both led by great first-team All-Americans. <laughs> Just an awesome, like both of these teams were super, super awesome. I, I loved like this the, the some of the individual players hated Maryland because they beat IU. Not that I hated the team, mm-hmm. but just like the fact that they beat us. That's our, uh, that's but our the only players on it were so so, good. so fun. Like Juan Dixon is a player, like the type of player I love to watch. Super fast. I thought Chris Steals. Wilcox was going to be like a fifteen time NBA All Star. Like, un- I mean, he was so the the dunk he has near the beginning of the game. He makes this 
absolutely NBA play where he just like grabs it through two defenders, goes up and just yokes it on. Yeah, and as IU awesome. fans, you were just sitting there watching like, like uh, shit. This is gonna be tough. <laughs> shit. <laughs> so we got all these blocks the first game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, so the main thing I remember um, about the O two game was Dick Vitale going on a tangent mm-hmm. on Sports Center, and it, it it irked me. I'm a I'm a Dickie V fan though. I, I will say that I know I know he's getting up there. Uh, I know that there's a lot of hate on social media for him, but he's kind of like Walton to me, where you just gotta gotta treasure those guys and keep them around for as long. They've kind of earned it. He, I mean, he brought Mar- March Madness for sure. He helped create for, it for sure. He is. helped create all this college basketball exactly. stuff. Like yeah, for sure. But the one I mean, I've disagreed with him before, but I hated that he was on just a tangent of reseeding the final four after the teams get there. Yeah. And the only reason he was saying that was because Oklahoma and IU were on the other side. No, no respect for and, IU. And it was two number ones right. on on this side, which was Kansas and, and Maryland, two number one seeds. And he wanted to see him in the national championship. But that's just not the way yeah. it works out. But you were actually at the game. I was there. That's dope. I, uh, it was such a great experience. I had a friend who was a cheerleader for the IU team, and he calls us up uh, like a night before the game or maybe a day before, and he's like, hey, would you guys like Final Four tickets? I got some. I'm like, of course. Yeah, so, I'll be there. I'll have that. <laughs> no chance uh, of getting a hotel room at that point in Atlanta, though. So we had, Minor detail. We drove down, slept in a uh, friend's car in, the, in a parking garage, went to the game, You know, saw all this, the Final Four stuff the next day, went to the game. Game, you know the IU game and then this is the night game so we're there too we had tickets for this too and uh, it was a good thing because then when Kansas loses we hit up the Kansas fans and got tickets to the championship yeah, that's game. the way to do it, it was supposedly. the way to do it and we got we got like we were way up in the nosebleeds for the for the the first day but then we got like 50 you know 50 yard line pretty main, good main level tickets for the championship so, game so what was your main takeaway from the the O2 when from there <laughs> 20 year old Aaron Meyer being at the game. I mean, it's so cool because it's just, it's just such a big atmosphere. You know, it's just such an atmosphere. This is the thing I think about live sports so much. You know, you think about um, what makes them so special. It's just, there's something about being around a huge group of people that is just, it's just undeniably awesome. You know, I'm watching this game and the game starts out, Kansas starts out like gangbusters. They are smoking Maryland at the, at the beginning of the game. They're up like 15 to four or something like that. And they just looked great. And Maryland just battles. They play this like methodical uh, game the entire time. That Dixon is just relentless yep. when he starts hitting jumpers, yep. and it's just they just chip away at it. And that you could you could tell almost right away that they weren't going anywhere because even when they got down, like Gary Williams patiently you know calls a timeout, you know doesn't look freaked out at all. They come back out, just kind of hit a bucket, hit, well, a, hit a bucket. Well, we talked about it um, before we started pod the the pod too that Maryland had been there the year before. I always think yep. that that helps tremendously. It, it's same core. I know you introduced Wilcox and maybe Drew Nichols potentially. He's in too. there. Steve Blake. Yeah, but but those guys. I, I'm thinking who was freshman on there that didn't get that experience. Oh, I but see. Mm-hmm. you're sprinkling some of those guys in. Um, but your core is has that experience, yeah. and they've given away that huge lead against Duke in mm-hmm. 01, and Duke wins it. So I mean, hypothetically, you could have Maryland winning back to back championships, yeah. which is nothing. Crazy. Mouton, Nothing. I liked Mouton. Yeah, he was like he was like um he was Maryland, about him. Maryland's version of Moye for know. us. I forgot about him. And just a uh, yeah, just a just a guy that'll get in there and muck it all up for you and make the hustle plays and bring the energy. I love that dude. Uh, so so the other the other part that was interesting, they're going back to the final four. Kansas is eleventh final four here. I thought that was pretty pretty mm-hmm. pretty amazing. Um, and then the the thing that killed IU so in in the championship game comes forward in this one too. Maryland did not miss free throws. You know, people always complain about college teams not hitting free throws. You want to know who never missed free throws? <laughs> Maryland. They almost set the all time record. And they won a lot and, of games. And, and that was definitely how they won a lot of games. They were great. It is amazing not to go off on a tangent, but it's amazing how bad teams are f- shooting free throws now. Ridiculous. I it's, can't understand. I can't. I can't. When when the game overall has improved from a shooting perspective, yeah, you have to be able to shoot to play now, but nobody can make free throws. 
Yeah, no doubt. So one of the things that segments that we do when we do the the games is something about what we call can't let it go. So I don't know if you have anything, but I'm going to keep going on this one. The five fouls. I don't know how you feel about this, but I am so over five fouls in college basketball. Because at the beginning of this game, Baxter picks up a couple fouls that's, right away. That's a staple he's of the college sit, game, he's though. Sitting down, he's sitting down, and I'm Sucks. just like, man, I want to see the beefy guy out there because him and him and Dixon were just awesome. The problem together. isn't with the fouls, the 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 amount of fouls. Yeah. The, with the officiating, let him play. You got especially a, a <laughs> final four is. game. Like you got to let it go. A little the bit NBA the only game. has six fouls. That's just one more foul. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I feel like but they know. Say, guys. But they know how to officiate it so yeah. that your players play. I agree. And, and it's different in the college game. And what happens when you get in those deep tourney runs? It, in especially if you get a marquee matchup of two guys you want to see, uh, always somebody will pick up two quick fouls. And then college coaches just have a tendency to sit those dudes for like ten minutes at a time. Yeah, you like, know, or the rest of the half. Exactly. Like, we're gonna save them it, all for the rest. Exactly. Of the half. Like, and it's yeah. like because they don't trust the officiating. Yeah. Maybe for good reason. Yeah. Probably so. <laughs> um, the the Langford guy for Kansas too coming off lo- silky him. smooth. Yeah. He was lefty. He's fun, he's fun to see. Uh, but I want to hit a uh, di- little audio on Dixon here. We'll call this the 19-9 moment. So you're going to understand why this is Dixon hitting a couple of threes. And he had, I mean, I, I remember him being a good shooter, but I remembered it more mid-range, but he was fine from three-point range. Too. Yeah, that dude could ball. He, he, could, he could absolutely ball. So let's listen to this. You cannot relax even if you scored. Dixon. Oh, what he a shot. has the touch tonight. You can see it early. Ten points already for Dixon. You say tonight, Jim, when has he not had the touch? 29 against Siena, 29 Wisconsin, 19 Kentucky, 27 Connecticut. Pretty good run in the NCAA tournament. Look for Dixon to try to get open. There he is. Dixon, a three. They cannot stay with him in this zone. Screen by Holden. Dixon. Again. Yeah. <laughs> the screen just was as important it. as the shot. Just striking it. And just could not, could not uh, stick with him. He's so, he's so like... Wiggly and just all over the place. So you set a screen for them. They were in that in that zone. Uh, Kansas was, and they just kept they just kept losing him. And that, yeah. he's not a guy you want to lose at all. No, at all. Oh, but to God. do it in a dome too, I always I always find that fascinating too. The, 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 those shooters can get out there and stroke it in a dome that's not built for basketball, and the depth perception is off. And I guess they're used to it now, but that used to be a big deal back in back in the day. Yeah, no doubt about it. it, it, it the, that dome too is a legit a legit dome. Like it. it uh, they had it set the way they had it set up. They had it half, but you know when you're in those those places, it feels an absolutely enormous. You know, yeah. oh yeah, way at the top. I've, it, I've been there at Lucas Oil, it's, and it's like I think there's a weird thing even with the audio. I don't know how much that would affect a player or not, but you know you you notice it like the way the, the way the ball sounds when it's bouncing and the way that the fans sound. And I don't know if it would be how much that really affects you, but everything factors in. You know, you think about like how the minute details that all these trainers try to get into with these guys stretching all these little muscles. And then we just totally write off like the mental aspects they, they of must, the game. They're right? probably used to it, man. Now, but by, <clears throat> by these days, you think so? I do. I do. I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm, I'd be I mean, curious. by the time you get to the national championship, you played in like four of them getting there. That's true. They, yeah, they're, they do it more now. And I thought, I thought they'll, when, they'll open the whole thing up. Oh right no. Now. When I looked, um, when I look back at Maryland's O two 2 run, I thought it was kind of neat that they beat, uh, Yukon, Kentucky, uh, Kansas and IU to win a national championship. Yeah. That's a pretty good, pretty good run. That's a pretty good like who's who of college basketball to <laughs> you know have have a we did a win it. under your yeah, belt we like it. well can't we just ran this. through like five historic programs yeah. to get this thing or we you know four or whatever it is no doubt before this though Kansas had had the toughest road ever to the they had played every you know seed the high they were number one but then they played the eights you know all yeah. the way, all the way up, all the way to chalk so they chalked all the way to the final four wow. so they, they would have been pretty good, you know pretty impressive too if they had won it all. and then they go back and. Three, they do, and win, uh, and team. get beat by 
Syracuse, but they win their final four game. Yeah. And then they, they lose. Losing that championship. Yeah, those shorts are coming Ooh. in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I can't I I can't wait for that. So really really it could be the O two shorts because the same shorts. We could have we could have both from O two, right. but we 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 deemed them the O threes. Okay, I got a, I got another one. This is a from this game that I want to talk a little bit about uh the those the bias team and this kind of what you remember or what you uh found as you're investigating that. So this is uh would this game have been better with Bill Walton? So we got a little bit of audio again. Here you go. No. You'll like the audio at least. And we're at Stanford today, and we've got the game of the millennium tonight. <laughs> Billy. It doesn't get any better than this. Learn to love your job. Love pressure. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can succeed here. Barack Obama. I don't think he's going to coach. So. Well, you keep saying that, but why? You, why are you so negative? Why do you just turn down? Party on. It's a wonderful day. It's Oregon. The sun was out. Come on. <laughs> How do you not love that dude, know, man? See? How can you so not what, love this No. <laughs> no. I'll tell you why. Because of Billy Packer. You know okay. I love Billy Packer. Perfect. Perfect. B- perfect. Billy Packer is perfect for the Final Four, that's and the they seg- should bring him back. That's the segue. So we're going to hit this uh, Dixon Steel. I love how he calls this. Carlson had made that one very foolish oh. There's Dixon on his patented steals. And he's going to have the easy lay-in. Number one steel man at his university and in the ACC, and very seldom does it against your dribble. He does it with incredible anticipation. I do. I do remember Juan Dixon being yeah. being cat quick. I love. I love that little detail. That's such a great little detail there. Like does does it seldom does it against your dribble. He's Billy just, Packer's the man, dude. Just uh, stands out there watching. Thompson shouts him out too. Interesting. Does he? Yeah, he, he sticks up for him. I guess he got uh, there was a situation oh, with with Iverson. Yeah, yeah. He, I, I honestly don't think he meant anything. He by didn't. It. And that yeah. and Thompson knew. And he. Well, I'll tell you what, Thompson. That book. I, I hope that you. Got, I have you, it. I, I got have it. it. I have it. it. And we're gonna be talking to the author of that too i didn't even have time to watch the game that we're talking about right now i, I don't have time I know for a book I know, I right know. now it's, ama- but, it's amazing but when you once i it, once i pick it up it's gonna be tough to put down is. you're gonna be amazed and he his perspective on just life in general is just you also wonderful. get an hour to an hour from that's work right. every day that audio and you get that audio book <laughs> that, that's why you're the king of podcasts that's too right. like I, nobody has time for that <laughs> shit man you gotta drive and start driving around put your kids in the back of the car and start driving around don't fall asleep take a nap no i would fall asleep and listen to a podcast my kids in the car that wouldn't be good all right tell me what you know about this uh bias bias team because i i was looking them up and just found them it was endlessly f- fascinating it's too. so interesting and right he was super uh, unbelievable so the year that. before they actually have a better year uh, yeah. a very similar record uh overall record but i guess i was shocked the most by the 85 86 um because the record was not good like 15 and 12 Mm-mm. in the regular season but that was enough to get them in so then i was like okay well maybe they won the the eight ACC tournament to get in and they didn't. Um, so they got an at large bid. Um, but the reason that we didn't make these, the 84, 85 shorts is we could not get any kind of pictorial, uh, confirmation that they wore the yellows mm. in 84, 85, but we knew that for a fact that they wore them in 85, 86. And so we had to label them 85, 86. And we really just wanted to, uh, pay homage to, to Lynn bias, um, and make sure that we included him, you know, somewhere in the launch. What did you think of the the 30 for 30, how they, how they characterize them? Cause it's such a weird weird time. Um, you know, we did the, the boys at Dunbar. It's such a weird time in America for, you know, for athletes because of the things going on out, off the court and the, 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 the temptations and the supports that aren't there. I mean, not, not only have things changed where the, they surround the athletes up front with more people, but I think that just off the court, they're just a, were, you know, availability of things mm. or just the, the naivete mm-hmm. where you're like, Oh, they're yeah. so young. Yeah. You just, I mean, they're so young. So they're kids, young. man. They're kids. But, but just in, and people lose sight of that. Like just because you're the number two pick in the draft doesn't make, mean that you don't make bad decisions. Like uh-huh. you're, you're still at some point, just a 21 year old, 22 year old kid. The takeaway from that 30 for 30 uh, to me was he came from such a great family. Mm. And so like your heart just hurts for all of them. Like everybody involved, like, it, and, and, and you know this because we've been um, teachers and in education for a long time and we've lost some of our students. We've yeah. lost some of our kids in the past, multiple steps, you know, multiple schools have had that stuff happen. And you just feel this sense of emptiness when somebody so young dies um, because of the promises unfulfilled and the, uh, or the promise that, that, 
of their life being unfulfilled. It's just a very, very tough pill to swallow, regardless of if they're famous or not. You know, that 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 has yeah. very little to do with it um, in my book. But this is somebody that made it, put in all That's the hard how work. That's just get the story told. Right? Exactly. There's so many people who were playground legends and maybe didn't even make it to Maryland. and, and Bad decisions fell, and bad choices fell, fell and things like that. that. It's just, um, you know... It's 30 for, th- I mean, the 30 for 30 is just heartbreaking. Yeah. Like the story is heartbreaking. It's I just the, really tough, but, I, but, but that's not what this launch was not, about no. at all. I mean, the, the, that's the, that's the sad part, but I think that the, the great part is that he gets to live on with the, what he did contribute to. Sure. And at Maryland, sure. Legend. if you go on and watch highlights of, of him, I mean, th- there are like little highlight packages that are so worth checking out and just enjoying. Yeah. Like if you're a fan a, at all of Maryland yeah. or college sports, you should know who he is and, and know that. That it, it was legit that people considered him yeah, and as from a, good as Michael Jordan. From a very um, selfish standpoint, you you feel almost cheated out of watching him grow as a player. Oh like you just gosh. you just you yearn for that as the a fact, basketball the junkie. Fact that he would have been on those Boston Celtics teams is with Larry crazy. Bird and Kevin McHale and yeah, Robert Parrish. I know. And it, I mean, it's part of the story that makes it even hurt more. Like Simmons, it really Simmons says all the time that that he thinks he might have extended like their careers. That's even. what like Bird they, they Bird is always like quoted yeah. saying that you know he could have played another. See, seven, you years. see LeBron and Anthony Davis, and yeah. you could kind of see the the blueprint for that, right? To have but a it, the, the eighty six Celtics are like arguably the greatest NBA team of all time, and then yeah. you add Lynn Bias to it, it would have been ridiculous. <laughs> wow! Yeah, so, but it was cool to it was cool to bring back his uniform. Um, cool to bring back a piece of his Maryland memorabilia. We feel super honored to have done that, um, and, and uh, super happy to have done it. And uh, the shorts have sold really well, and people seem to relate and love them. So. Maryland's just going to be fun to talk about for years. We're going to get back yeah. on and talk about yeah, like yeah. Le- a whole thing on lefty. Like I just need to talk about lefty. We haven't even talked about Joe Smith, exactly. LeBron Prophet, exactly. Steve Francis, Keith Booth. Like, yeah. yeah. Legends, Al- man. Albert King, Buck yeah. Williams. Buck Williams, Lynn Elmore. Yep. Um, there's a lot, man. Yeah, there's I, a lot. That's what's, so, that's what's cool. This is like the opening chapter. Yeah, that's, this is why Maryland was my white whale. This is, sure. this is what I needed in my life. So thank you, Maryland. For sure. All right, man. You got anything else? That's it. All right.